my dear friends, Madam Chair, Maimona Tarishi, Madam Secretary General, Barbara Greenspan. Dear friends, first of all, I would like to extend my thankfulness for the team that has done a great job to produce this very important report on economic cost of the Israeli occupation of Palestine, including restrictions on Area C. That includes Dr. Kozal Wright, Dr. Mautasim, and Rami Laz. My dear friends, international experience has taught us that colonization makes profit, and people under occupation and under colonization, they lose. Israel is no exception. <laughs> the Israeli occupation, through its settlement tools and colonization tools, has been making profits, and Palestinians have been losing. Israel, and since it, its occupation to Palestinian territories in 1967, has employed a number of mechanisms of control including direct military occupation and settler colonization to the extent that number of settlers who have been living in Palestine illegally, illegitimately, are totaled to 751,000 in 2022 at a time when this number was zero in 1967. Beside this colonization and settlers, Israel has also expropriated land, privately owned, publicly owned, under different labels and different names and different categories. In addition to this, Israel has also controlled our infrastructure. Roads in Palestine has been constructed to serve Jewish settlements. And today there is a double standard of roads and infrastructure. Roads that leads to settlements are different quality than roads that leads to Palestinian towns and villages and refugee camps. Israel controls our security. Israel controls our water resources and Israel controls also our electricity supply to the extent that 95% of our electricity is imported from Israel. And at a time when Israel is restricting the uh, construction of power generation plants or solar energy units and so on and so forth. Trade in Palestine is one way between us and Israel. We import from Israel a total value of $6 billion of goods and commodities, and we export to Israel a total value of $850 million a year. More than that, the Palestinian labor market has been fully and totally distorted by the fact that Palestinian farmers and peasants have been pushed away from their land because of land expropriation in a process that one can call the proletarianization of the Palestinian farmers and peasants to make them cheap laborers in the Israeli labor market to serve the Israeli settlement program and the Israeli economy in total. In addition to all of this, Israel has fragmented the Palestinian territories. Gaza is totally isolated from the rest of the Palestinian areas. Gaza is divided between yellow area and white area. Jerusalem is a walled city. Every single Palestinian has no access to the city of Jerusalem except those who have written permits from the Israeli military governor. The rest of the West Bank is divided between Area A, Area B, and Area C, where Area A makes only 18% of the total area of the West Bank, Area B is 28%, and Area C is around 60%, which is fully under the control of the Israeli army. This area C that is used by Israel is considered to be the geographic reservoir for the expansion of Jewish settlements. The report today that is at our hand, produced by a very capable team and by a very prestigious organization, ONICTAD, explicitly states that Palestine has lost between the years 2000 and 2022 a total value of $50 billion. That's three times our GDP at the 2022 prices. More than that, the Israeli settlements, including Jerusalem, has contributed to the Israeli GDP by a total annual value of $41 billion. That makes it up to $852 
billion dollars over the years between 2000 and 2002. My dear friends, as I have stated earlier, this Israeli occupation makes profit. Palestinians, they lose. At a time when we suffer budget deficit and financial bleeding because of Israeli deductions, if Palestine is independent state, we don't need any donors' money. If Palestine is in control of its resources, Palestine can be a welfare state according to the figures that has been explicitly stated in the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development report. In conclusion, I would like to say that this Israeli occupation should be a losing occupation in order for it to end. Palestinians, they lose. And in order for us to make this Israeli occupation losing, we have to impose sanctions on settlement products and on all aspects that has to do with the settlements. This valuable report has to be submitted as a document against Israel at the International Criminal Court. I call upon Onikdad to continue the good work of this committee because it is a documentation of a historical moment for Palestine, both at the political and the economic level. I call upon all of you, my dear friends, the participants of this session, to disseminate the information in this report as wide as it should be so that people are aware of what Palestine is suffering from and that Israel occupation is making profit. We continue our struggle in line with international law. We call upon you to help us manifest our state on the borders of 67 in line with international law and in line with relevant United Nations resolutions that has to do with Palestine. I thank you and God bless you.